What's up, friends? We are back in the garage with Clifford, our 1987 Volkswagen Westphalia. I think this is where we spent most of our time together, to be honest. So today we're replacing the original hookup boxes with some new ones from Go Westy, and then we're gonna briefly talk about each system and some of the issues we've had in the past. But before we get started, if you are not subscribed already, make sure you hit that button, hit that bell, so you can check out all of our other videos. So there are three separate hookup boxes on Westies and they're either laid out like this or they can be all three in a row. So this one is the city water hookup and you just basically attach a garden hose and you'll get fresh water into your vehicle. This box is where you fill up your onboard 50 liter water tank. And last, this one is the electrical where you can plug into 120 volt household power. Starting with the city water. So from the boxes on the outside, there is a line that runs behind these cabinets and then that goes up and into the faucet on the sink. And the faucet actually has a knob that you can select either tank or city water just by like turning it one way or the other. So that's tank. You can hear the pump going. There's no water in there right now. And then the other way would be city water. So the reason we're replacing these is because they are 35 years old and they're in pretty rough shape. And actually some kind people over at Go West, you happened to see our latest van tour video and saw the rough shape that our boxes are in, like missing lids. And they decided to send us a set of their new hookup boxes. So this is our new box. And all we're gonna have to do is steal the old 90 degree fitting from our old one, swap it over to the new one, and then just screw it back in. Okay, so now everything's tight. We're just gonna hook up our hose to our box and make sure we have no leaks before reattaching it to our body because that's the last thing we want. Um, anytime you hook up a city water hose to these, or any RV really, you want to use a pressure water regulator so that in case there's any spikes in city water pressure, you don't like blow a line or something inside and then have a massive leak in your vehicle. So we'll put this pressure regulator on first. And then a nice feature of these boxes is that they have a quick connect valve instead of having the threaded one that the OEM box has. So you just thread this onto your hose and you can snap this on and off and it's easier to hook your lines up. Actually, a nice thing about these boxes too is that the lid actually stays open when you flick it up. City water done. It's a funny story. The first time we hooked up a hose to the city water line, we ended up spraying water all inside the Westie because we shortly found out that the city water line had been cut and on one end they had a drill bit and the other end was open and so it just sprayed water inside the entire Westie. So that was one of many water leaks that we had inside this Westie. So we ended up replacing the entire city water line as well as we replaced the trap for the sink because the old one was cracked and leaking. We ended up having to re-glue around the faucet because that was also leaking. And we ended up replacing all of the water lines that actually run to the tank because they were just really old and gross. Like I mentioned before, there is a 50 liter water tank on our Westie and is accessible through this cabinet here. You just lift that up and there is a little panel and voila, you can access your water tank and we've done it many times before for cleaning it out, which is pretty important. So some Westies have a pump inside the water tank, but ours is located right here. It's a 12 volt pump that draws water from the tank through the water lines that run behind the cabinets up and into our faucet just a very basic system. So with the water tank hookup, one of the most annoying things about the OEM one was this little plastic key that was required to open the box. Oh, it's gonna be so good to get rid of this stupid key. The new box just goes away with it altogether. It just has the same kind of lid and quick connect design as the city water. Now we will just do the same thing. Hook up the hose, make sure we don't have any leaks. Oh, this is gonna be so much nicer filling the tank instead of standing there with a hose for five minutes. And last up is our electrical box. So when we are plugged into shore power, we have two outlets that are powered in our Westie. The first is right here, easy to access. You can just plug in whatever. The second is located behind this cabinet right here. And normally the stock fridge is plugged into that. So when you are parked and plugged in, you could actually run your fridge off of electrical. Now we actually ended up removing the stock fridge, putting in shelves and installing an external fridge, which we did a video all about. I'm gonna leave a link right there so you can go check it out. So instead we have a battery charger plugged into this outlet. So when we are hooked up, we are actually able to charge up our batteries. Now this is gonna be a little bit different because we have a Canadian Westie and on the American Westies, when you open up the box, you just have a male electrical plug connection right there. But on the Canadian Westies, we have 
an extension cord that pulls out. All right, so that's our old box. What I'm thinking we're gonna do is just disconnect the other side of this cord at the circuit breaker, cut ourselves some new wiring, and we're gonna run this from the circuit breaker to the back of our new box. It says in the instructions that there's a plastic cover that goes on the back to cover up these exposed terminals. We don't have that since we didn't have a box to pull it from. Nothing should get to the back of these terminals, but in case like a tool or something metallic bounces in that cabinet and touches up against these terminals, we're just gonna cover it in a bunch of electrical tape. Now we have all three of our boxes with these nice fancy new little hinges. I quite like these hinges, how they stay up. Our battery charger seems to be working, so that's a good sign since that's plugged into where the stock fridge used to be plugged into. This is the first thing that I found that I could plug in and <laughs> test. Done. Hookups done. Wait, one more thing. Okay, so we lied, two more things. Because we also got this little aluminum flu vent cover that'll cover up here and make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so we did actually have a cover, but what we did is I just found an electrical box cover at Home Depot and drilled some extra holes. So it's a little janky and it's got a few extra holes in there that don't need to be. Let's see what this looks like. Looking good. Ooh, so shiny. All right, one last thing we need to do. It's my time to shine. Deckle time. The last step. So we got city water, tank, and electrical. Yeah, does that look about right? Oh man, that looks so slick. It's such a small upgrade, but makes like such an aesthetic and functional difference. I hope you enjoyed this video and this project. I think it was a nice little upgrade. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys and gals again on the road with Clifford. Bye.